Hello everyone, I wanted to give you a look at our fun schooling plan. These resources are for my daughter who is almost seven. She's in between a kindergarten and first grade level. She does have ADHD and possible dyslexia, so she's a little bit of a struggling reader, but that's why fun schooling and the thinking tree has been such an amazing resource for us. The first thing I wanted to talk about is dyslexia games. This is level A dyslexia games. And it is essentially critical thinking and reasoning puzzles for struggling learners. My daughter has ADHD and possible dyslexia. She has already completed this entire series of um, book one through six. So we are actually not using it this year, but I wanted to include it in this video because if your child hasn't done it and is struggling, I highly recommend completing this entire series before adding any other language arts or phonics programs in. This is... The first book that my daughter is using, it is a level A core journal. It says preschool, kindergarten, and first grade, my fun schooling journal. Now core journals are generally designed to be used um, about three days a week, so we will continue doing that. We did already start this one because we've been a little bit of a transition. We completed our previous curriculum early and started our fun schooling journey, but we have not started doing everything fun schooling. So this has a few of the pages already done. We did a unit on unicorns together. So you can see here, get to draw the covers of the books that you're using. This is part of that dyslexia games I showed you a minute ago. This is some of the puzzles in there. More drawing and coloring, nature study. She decided to draw a tulip in there. I have not been strict or rigid about how many pages my children need to do or what order. My um, purpose at this point is that they are willing to participate. So while I read out loud from our unit study or our read aloud books, they are to pick a page and work on it during that time. She's jumped around quite a bit, but that's okay because she's still following directions. Some more dyslexia game puzzles, a menu plan, we haven't gotten that far, but she's excited about that one. Movie time, emotions and moods, some math practice. Now this is not meant to be a math curriculum. It's a space to practice math that you were doing elsewhere. You could give your child some um, addition or subtraction problems to solve if they are struggling with writing numbers. It'd be a good time to practice writing them. Nature study, yeah. or movie time, some space for copy work. You'll see it kind of follows a loop. I think there's about five or six pages in this that, that loop through. More dyslexia game puzzles, drawing time, coloring, another menu. So yeah, that is her core journal. We'll be working on that three days a week. And then with fun schooling, it's recommended to also let your child pick a major or theme, something that really intrigues them to let them dive into. Um, because we are choosing to use these journals along with our unit studies, I am not adding a major or theme journal at this point because each of our unit studies is already its own theme or unit um, for learning. But if you have an older child, that is using their core journal independently, and then you wanted to have them add a major. There are tons of options. There's animal theme, there's fashion, history, science, tons of options. The next step in fun schooling after your child has picked their core journal and or theme journal that they'll be using is to find a spelling or vocabulary journal for your child to use. Generally, they are used probably about two to three days a week or more if your child needs more practice. Um, my daughter, like I said before, is a struggling reader, so we are actually going to continue using um, her Explode the Code series. She's about two-thirds of the way through one, and she's going to need the extra practice of one and a half. So we will focus primarily on those. Um, probably, I would say we're going to start with about two days a week, and then we'll let her pick which one of these that she wants to work on the third day of the week. The next step is picking either a creative writing or copy work journal for your child. If your child is over the age of 10, it's recommended to use a creative writing journal. If they are under 10, it's recommended to do a copy work journal like this one. 
Now, if your children are working on copy work, you do want to correct their punctuation or spelling errors or point out where they may have missed a capital letter. If they are doing creative writing, however, for those kids over 10, it is recommended that you do not make those corrections. Just let them write. You can read what they wrote, but don't make any corrections. Next up, you're going to want to find a math journal for your child to work on. These are not designed to be individual math curriculums, but they are there to give your child more practice in a fun way. So my daughter has gone through a couple different um, kindergarten level math curriculums and none of them have worked well for her. She is struggling with remembering numbers and what the numbers are called. So we're taking a different approach this year. She's going to be working primarily through this comic book math fun schooling journal, which she's extremely excited about. And then I also have a couple of Osborne white clean books here, First Math and Telling Time. And I have a money one that my toddler has stolen from me. And she'll also be working on these games, Some Swamp, which is addition and subtraction um, up to, I believe, nine. And then Sums in Space, which deals with a little bit higher addition and subtraction. We've played them a few times already, and even though she's having a little bit of a struggle, she does enjoy them and wants to keep playing them. So that is what she is going to be doing for her fun school math. In case you're wondering why I don't have anything specific to use for science and history, the reason is that when we do our unit studies, we always cover those topics. So we will be incorporating that into our core journal. If you're looking for journals that are more specific to history and science, especially for older kids, there are tons of amazing options on their website, and I highly recommend checking out what they have to offer. Thanks so much for joining me for a look at how we learn. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys, and I will do my best to answer them.